Hi, Shiva Rajaya here from vitalcoaching.com. We are talking about coupling dynamics and the topic for this video is how to hold space for your partner. Uh, we've been talking about you know, creating these communication protocols, this safe zone where it's okay to, to voice what is alive inside of you. And um, the, the specific topic for this one is when you are receiving feedback or your partner is sharing something, this thing that your partner might be sharing might have to do with their life, with their personal challenges, or it might have to do something, something to do with the dynamics of uh, your relationship. So the core idea is this. You, when you're holding space for somebody, holding space means this. It is that you are creating a safe zone for them to share what is alive at that moment. And so when you are creating this safe zone, there are a couple of things that you have to do. The first one is that you have to listen. Listening means being present and not interrupting them. You don't go like, oh, yeah, 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 I know what you're saying. Yeah, 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 I had the same thing happening to me like three days ago. No, your partner is sharing. They're sharing, they're voicing their truth and they need to have the space to be able to voice. So listening, that's the first step. It's really powerful and it's very important. So if you want to have a safe space for sharing, again, if your partner needs to share something, if you are doing a shadow check or a gratitude minute or a feedback minute or something like that, when they are sharing, you've got to give them the space to voice. And so if you have only five, 10 minutes, just set up the time and tell them, you know, I really want to hear what you have to say. And I only have to, five minutes right now because I have to take off soon okay the kids are screaming or something's going on just five minutes okay is that okay or five minutes or ten minutes or i've got an hour yeah let's enter into this profound sharing and i really want to have to hear what you have to say so but you set up the time container then you set up the safety you're not going to get interrupted by technology phones ringing kids coming in you want to create really this container where you can share without being interrupted so the first step, again, is like you listen. <laughs> you listen to what your partner has to say. If there is a trigger or something that is alive, even if there is an emotional charge, you're not going to enter into reactive mode. You're not going to fight back. You're not going to talk over them. You're going to receive what they have to say. And sometimes what they are sharing is just like, wow, I have all these emotions coming from my past. I have, you know, and you are being a little bit of a therapist. Yeah. And that's something that is really powerful and beautiful in your coupling experience. So you're going to be listening. That's the first step. The second step is once they finish, you tell them, thank you for sharing. I hear you. Thank you for sharing. I hear everything you said. Okay, so you offer really the, the gratitude for them voicing their truth so that they understand that they can do that again if they need to in the future. The third thing, the third thing that you need to say is just understand, deep inside, take a moment to pause and understand the core message that they are giving you. Whatever this might be. The, the fourth step is this. Before you offer reflection or before you take any step further, you ask them, is there anything I can do right now? What do you need right now? How can I help you right now? Because there are lots of things that you could be doing. You know, she might, your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend might be like, I just want you to make me a cup of tea. Okay, I just need to drink something. I'm dehydrated. Or just take me in your arms. I just need a hug. Or I would like some reflection on what I said. How do you feel about it? What's your impression? Am I making up stories or is this real? You know, so they might be, give me reflections. Or they might be, I really need advice. I know that you're an expert on this. Please tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. So they might ask for coaching or reflection or advice. But if you, you know, if you step in with your own agenda, you go like, oh, great. Yeah, I have an answer for that. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, let me give you some advice on that. You say, I'm not asking for advice. I'm not sharing because I need advice. I don't I'm not asking because I want you to fix it. I'm just sharing because I need to voice it. I need to express it to somebody I can trust. 
I don't want your advice right now, okay? You see the dynamics. So if you step in too fast with advice, if you step in like, and you go like, yeah, I have a solution for you. Go like, maybe that's not what your partner wants. What your partner might want is just a safe space to voice. So the core mistake that you might make in a situation like that is to jump in and try to fix your partner. Try to give them advice. Try to tell them what to do. Very often, that's not what they are asking. The first thing they are asking is for you to listen, to be a container, to be a safe container so that they can actually voice and identify what is alive inside of them. Okay. So those qualities that I give you there, like listening, gratitude, thanking them, taking a the time to pause and really understand what they are saying, offering them help, in what way and what form do you want your help? And then if they say, yes, I would love some advice, then take a moment to pause and to identify exactly the core message that you want to give. You don't want to add confusion to them. You don't want to add, um, you know, um, blame them for what they are feeling. Say, oh yeah, you should not feel that way. You should not feel that way. You say, but I'm feeling that way. So I can acknowledge what's, you know, I can see why you're hurt. I can see right now why you're triggered over what your friend did to you. It's, it makes sense. Yeah, I would be triggered as well. So you acknowledge, you validate, you offer, and if they, if they go like, wow, here is what I would do. I would set up a meeting with them and then have a conversation, you know, for instance, with if, if your, your girlfriend or your partner is talking about the problem that they have with, with a friend, you know, you say, well, here is, yeah, I know, here is what I would do. So you can offer a reflection. And then once you offer reflection and once you give them feedback, and you might give them some advice if they are open for it, then you let go, you pull back. You don't bring it again into conversation. You don't force them to follow your advice. Hey, did you do what I, what I told you should be doing? Did you call them? No, there is no force. It's like the feedback or the advice or the coaching that you offer is something that is optional. Okay, people are always free to follow your advice or not. If they decide not to follow your advice, you go like, you know what, it's your life. You make your own choices. What I offer you is just some general suggestions, some ideas coming from my own expertise, but you're not forced to do anything. At the end, it's your truth. You make your own choice. And so you open the space of freedom for them to follow up on, uh, on your advice, your ideas or, or not. So what you notice here is that there is a lot of spaciousness. There is no control. There is no force. There is no demand. There is no pressure put on, on, on your partner. What they are doing is like they are sharing something that might be challenging. The way you are holding that space is really from a place of authenticity and truth without trying to use that weakness as an access point to, uh, to try to control them or to try to micromanage them. It's the opposite. You go like, wow, you know, this is real. I'm going to hold space so that you can heal that experience, so that you can get some new insights, so that you can really uh, voice and express to somebody that you can trust what is alive inside of you. Okay? Beautiful.